Hey, my name is Shansha. I sell art on shanshan.co. Today we're going to react to Chelsea Lang. So Chelsea Lang is a YouTube uh, painter. She mostly focuses on oil. She does figurative. Still uh, kind of your classical style of painting academically with a high degree of realism. A lot of I think she's mostly painting an oil painting, so a very traditional style painter, but obviously very uh, good talent. So let's take a look at her channel. Uh, looking at her homepage, she has this really nice video on how I quit my job to become a full-time artist. So that's really cool in the aspect that you will have, it's gonna pull in any artist that's gonna study this channel for painting. You're not normally gonna get too many, I think, collectors. Collectors probably watch your channel a little bit, but it primarily pulls in new artists, I think. And so that's a really great way to pull in the channel. She has her uploads, which is, you know, a good way to do it with the strategy of, you know, your most recent popular uploads, of course. And then she has some of her um, <clears throat> created playlists below, and that's it. Um, if we look at her playlists, she has one, two, three, four, five, six, six. Um, she doesn't have that many videos, maybe a hundred, I'm, I'm guessing here. So, you know, that's about right for that many amount of videos, probably five or six playlists is good enough. Once you get to, you know, 600, 500, whatever, then you want to kind of bridge out and maybe subdivide paintings by subject type. But she's really only doing figurative landscape a little bit and still life. So they're really the classic themes within realist painting. So let's look at the first video. How to start making money from your art. So great video to analyze. Hi everyone. If you're new here, my name is Chelsea and I specialize in creating expressive portraits in oil and helping artists find their style and achieve their painting goals. Today I wanna to talk about a topic that I get asked about. So this is really smart. She's kind of doing a painting in the background. So you see her painting, it's a time-lapse. So it's really fast. Uh, you're not gonna be bored watching it. And then she's doing a nice voiceover to kind of introduce you to the topic of how to start making money from your art. All the time that artists and non-artists alike have a lot of misconceptions about how to make money selling your art. Spoiler alert, it is not your website, it's not your business cards, and it's not even social media that helps you kick off this process. You don't need any of them, and I'm going to show you exactly why in this video. I work a lot with painters who are just making the leap to selling their work and are working toward painting full time. And I noticed that it's really common for us all to fall into a few traps along the journey to making your first sales from your artwork. And I wanna take this opportunity to set the record straight and give everyone the complete order of operations to begin making money from painting. No need to pause Before here. Before <laughs> we jump into it, I want to tell you a bit more about where I'm coming from and how that may influence what I cover today. So I'm a realist painter working with a fairly traditional style. So yep. I'm going to be talking about how to make money from that perspective today. But the principles I discuss here really do apply no matter what kind of art you're creating. I also make a living by selling my work online directly to collectors. So while I may mention galleries in here, again, I'm going to be speaking from my own experience. A lot of the same things apply though. So whether your goal is to get into a gallery or work directly with collectors, you'll want to be paying attention. So this is really nice. She has a really nice, um, just looking at the painting, she does kind of a, a bland gray wash kind of brown. So you give it a nice warm tone to the painting and then she's adding kind of you know her darks and then she's adding the really light base of really just blocking in really heavily so it's a really great way to build up on a painting in general all right with that being said let's get into this painting time lapse and let's talk about the very first thing you need to start getting sales from your work first you need to have a body of work made in a consistent style and with craftsmanship Beyond making a lucky sale here or there to a friend or family member, collectors need to know who you are as an artist and what your work is about. That means you need to be able to show them at least a handful of pieces that are consistent in their style. Before you create a consistent body of work with clear craftsmanship, you do not need to worry about your website, your social media, your branding, anything. Yes, I agree with that. You definitely have to master... <clears throat> 
your talent and it's always great to sell art in one style um, I know I have struggled with that as far as you know just focusing on one style I kind of find that boring so I kind of do a series in multiple styles um, but I do try to stay consistent within each sub style I develop and so there's a lot of different meat on the bone there but it is way easier if you just focus into one style she's focused here on realism obviously and your traditional subject matter, figurative, still life, landscape, that's always sellable. So very easy to market, way easier than say a pop artist or newer styles where you're kind of developing your own style abstract that's not recognizable. People easily understand recognizable art. And that's a big part of why I wanted to make this video. I see painters trying to do this process out of order all of the time. So if this is you, I wanna give you permission right now to put your website on hold, to put all of the social media marketing ideas you have on hold because we have some painting to do. So let's talk about what a consistent body of work means. First, what do I mean by style? For the purpose of this discussion, I see style as encompassing everything from the techniques you use to execute the painting to composition, mood, subject matter, and even things like color palette. All right, so she has a lot here. Let's see, go ahead a little bit. I hate to skip in this type of video, but the only way to analyze is skip ahead is 15 minutes. <laughs> painters with every day, and I would love to help you too. Below in the description is a link to book a strategy call with me to talk about your work and what's standing between you and achieving a consistent, identifiable style that you absolutely love creating. Okay, so what if you are actually already past this step? Well, once you have a body... So it's really cool. She actually books strategy calls with other artists to kind of get them honed in on their skills for what they're missing to actually sell art so it's a very cool thing that she's giving back to the artist world i would say and at the same time generating a lot of income probably as well body of work we need to show it off and no you don't need a finished website or big social media account to do this either so i describe this second step in this order of operations as consistently sharing your work and letting people know that it's for sale this sounds simple and maybe silly, but we all actually fail at this all the time from my experience. If you're failing at it, ask yourself, how many people did I show my last finished painting to? Or did I tell them it was available for purchase? A great follow-up to that question is, did I tell them the price? I can guarantee that we all have probably had a painting that we thought would sell immediately only to get no bites because we never told anyone that liked it that they could buy it. Okay, so how do we do this? First, I'd say to make sure that all of your friends and family know about a new painting that you absolutely love. You don't need to feel weird about it because you aren't pressuring anyone into buying anything. You're simply sharing with them a new piece that you're really proud of and excited about. The next step would be your existing social media following. And no, no huge account is required for this. So if you have an Instagram, a Facebook page, even a personal one, or a YouTube channel, share the piece. And be sure to let people know it's available and how they could purchase it. And it's okay if how to purchase it is just to send you a message so that you can work out the details individually. You don't need any crazy web so things like the bit. time you took to make the piece or how good you think it is. Right, let's skip ahead you a little bit. You can multiply that by the price per square inch. So how do you figure out what this price per square inch is? The answer is research. You want to make sure that you understand <sighs> the market your work exists in what your competition is like, and what your ideal collector expects to pay. Once you have gathered all of the data and understand all of those things, you eliminate the guesswork out of how much you should charge for your work, and you know exactly what you can ask for and trust that you can find a buyer for your paintings. If you're interested in the formula I use to price my work, including how to price your work, if you're in or applying to galleries, 
how to account for the complexity of pieces, or how to price your work when you have a large gamut of sizes. So this is really good. People always are challenged as an artist. Where, how do you price it? Do you use a certain formula? Do you use material cost plus profit? There's multiple strategies. There's I have a whole video on this, but it's like there's price times width is a very simple one. You can have um, our length times width times a price. So if it's 10 by 10 times 50 cents, that's $50, right? Another way is you do length plus width. So 10 plus 10 is 20 times a price. Say it's um, 0.5 cents. So it's 20, what was that, $10? <laughs> My math is horrible. But you get the idea, so you want to have a consistent pricing. I totally agree with that. Let's see what else you yeah, have. Website Isn't now. Isn't a prerequisite for sales and shouldn't take priority over the other things that we've already talked about in this video. But once you're at this step, it's important to make sure your website is first visually pleasing, that it fits with the tone of your work, that it lets collectors easily see your work all in one place, it has an easy way to purchase work, either via links to your galleries or a checkout function if you want to sell directly to collectors. And finally, that it lets collectors get to know more about you. This is something that I've been alluding to throughout this entire video. Selling work is about creating relationships with people. It's a so I'm going to cut this short it's a really good video i would encourage everyone to watch it individually i think it's really strong and she has a strategy call so it's very smart she's pulling in people to sell other artwork on and we need to change the stupid battery <laughs> this is how daily painting helps me reach my goals hmm. one thing i am absolutely obsessed with is setting and reaching goals specifically in this case painting goals whether I am talking about myself or chatting with my friends or my students, I am fascinated by the psychology of goal setting. And it's something I always love strategizing around. When I talk to students about setting their goals, I start with doing the work around understanding exactly what their end goal is, what kind of work they most want to be able to make. I go in depth about this in my previous video, so I'm gonna link that above as well as in the description. So this is clever, she's had a link at the first full year as an artist, so it's again referencing back <clears throat> how to become an artist, so it's re reinforcing this whole video and actually giving another link to a video. Um, <clears throat> the problem is if you put it very early in the video like you did here, she might skip the video and then your watch time goes way, way down. So. Ideally, you might want to put that link at the very tail end of the video, but again, there's fall off in the middle of the video, so it's kind of hard to determine where the ideal spot would that be, but I do like the video of linking this to another video. It's like, oh, maybe I want to start there versus start here. Today, though, I want to talk about a surprising method for achieving breakthroughs in my own work and how that ties into the methods I've already been testing out. For painters I mentor, one of the first things I talk to them about is making their painting practice super approachable. After all, the most amazing technique secret or perfect practice regimen don't actually do anything if you're not actually painting. <laughs> so to that end, I love suggesting daily painting or painting that you do regularly and typically in one setting. Yeah, I would agree. If you do daily painting, you're going to be really sharp on your painting skills. So you'll be really up and coming. You'll never have this idea of art block that people run into all the time. Like I have art block and it's probably because they're like a weekend painter. They only paint on the weekend. And so if you paint daily, you're forcing yourself to paint no matter what. And you paint mechanically, but then you always keep your skills sharp. And you never feel like, oh, I can't paint that. I can't paint this. I'll, oh, maybe I'll move it a little bit more in this direction. You're always comfortable with challenging yourself. So it's important to do this. I think that's a really great point. I'm going to skip ahead a little bit. This is a great video again, but we need to cover the whole thing. Working on a challenge to paint every day for 30 days. I even set a deadline. I booked a space for a one night <coughs> pop up show and I was going to fill it with the work from this challenge. That challenge not only helped me have that show and prove that I could make work and I could make money selling that work, it also helped me improve way faster than I thought that I could. 
but what does this have to do with this painting? I made this painting on the heels of completing the January Strata Easel Challenge, where you're tasked with painting from life every day. I thought it would just be a fun way to kickstart the year and add some paintings into my inventory. It's a really strong, the 30 day challenge, I've heard of that before too. And I've seen it with particular artists that did 30 days with just one thing. They did landscape beaches and their beaches were way better after that. So let's skip ahead a little bit. From the height of the table, I put my props on to the depth of the arrangement, to the temperature of the light um, and where I put that light source and whether I diffused it. So she has the focus not set on manual. So I would recommend always set your focus on manual when you're doing a video. Um, as you saw, the focus kind of went in and out. It, went, it focused here and then it focused out and it focused here. And it just did it briefly, but it's kind of annoying. So always set your, if you're doing it over the shot, kind of older the shoulder shot like this, always set it on manual so you never have that issue. You definitely want to make sure the focus is sharp. Um, it's easy to do the over the shoulder shot, set it manually. And something goes away, you don't check the focus, and then it's it's blurry. So <laughs> that's the danger of using manual, but manual focus is better in this type of scenario. All of those things were paramount. There you go, you have the focus again. Really begin to touch on how to create a pleasing arrangement of objects. I guess skip ahead a little bit. Floral paintings went exactly how I expected, and I hit the exact same stumbling blocks that I usually hit. Um, I just didn't know how to effectively simplify all of those busy petals and leaves. So the, the painting is just very beautiful. I like the fact that she's painting this really fast and just getting better and better and better. And it's just kind of blocky and then she's slowly kind of refining the details. It's really a smart way to work, I'd say. I thought the 20th day, I made a painting that surprised me. I learned which compositions weren't setting me up for success. Uh, which in this case tended to be flowers on dark ornate Persian rugs. I don't know exactly why those were tripping me up. It's just pattern on top of pattern. That's a bad thing. <laughs> flowers, you have to be on a solid background, I think. Or, uh, yeah, it just has a simplified val uh, background because flowers are very complex in themselves. So you don't need a really busy background. If you have a simple object, like you're doing a cube, then yeah, you can have a busy Persian rug in the background. So yeah, I can understand immediately why that would be an issue. Let's skip ahead a little bit. I think that you can get all of the same impact that I did. The only thing that I will add is that I would absolutely set goals for your challenge that feel reasonable and healthy. So she's still talking about the 30 second thing. Let's skip ahead. Meet you and talk to you there. So she's talking about how to reach her again. She's just another selling the artist on to connect her as a student, which is smart. So this next video is called Stop Painting from Photos if you want loose paintings, which right at the bat I can read with. One of the most common complaints I hear from oil painters is that their paintings feel too tight or too stiff and they want a way to loosen up and see a change in their paintings quickly. So today I want to talk about photographs and why taking a break from photos can help you break free of some of the tight painting habits you may be holding on to. And for this video, I want to share a time lapse of a painting that illustrates this topic really well, a floral still life that I painted from life, which in turn really forced me to loosen up and show me just how loosely I was capable of painting. So let's get started. First of all, I do want to say I am absolutely not an artist who is going to tell you to not work from photos. I think photos simply offer too many advantages for painters to ignore and advice that feels overly dogmatic or is throwing out really, really blanket ideas like you should never paint from photos, I think really lose a lot of valuable things. My take on photos is you can use photos, but you should interpret the photos. So a lot of people, they just copy straight the photo and they do kind of maybe hyper-realism or just even loose brush realism. And it's just really just straight copy of the photo. And they're just really making a little bit painterly, but really they haven't changed the composition. They haven't changed the lighting. They haven't moved any of the objects that are extra out of the painting. So you really should look at the, the photo and see how can you improve the photo. And a lot of 
paintings I see that are painting from the photo, you can kind of spot that they're from the photo. And you can spot where they haven't improved the image, you know, so it's just, you know, it's just, you don't want to do that. And we don't want to be taking those possibilities out of our painting journey. So let's those skip ahead a little bit. two shapes. Um, or we can soften it a bit and let those two objects sort of begin to blur together. Um, or we can make it an extremely soft edge all the way to the point where we can lose the edge between two objects. So we might know that those objects are separated somewhere, but not be able to tell in the actual painting where that separation is exactly. And what often happens when we work with photos is that our edges become a lot less nuanced than they are in real life. And the reason this happens, the reason that edges seem to be at their worst or tightness in our painting seems to be at our worst when we work from photos is because we're allowing the photo or specifically the camera to interpret all of the edges in our composition for us. Since the camera we took the photo with was filtered through a specific lens, which allows parts of the image to stay sharp. Hey, so, I'm so already this eliminates a lot of information. And I find that eliminating that information already lets me simplify, and that in and of itself tends to create much looser work. I also took my glasses off for most of this painting. So I have a really weak prescription, so you do not have to do this, or you don't need to be a glasses wearer to get this effect. Um, if you aren't like me, if you don't have a really weak prescription, um, you can replicate this just by squinting. And squinting at your painting really takes that filtering of extraneous information one step further. And I think you can see this really clearly. So it's interesting she's switching to the palette knife uh, versus just sticking with the brush. Um, it's no big deal to switch between palette knife and brush, obviously, but it's interesting she's really good, but then she's switching to the palette knife to kind of get those edges in. Uh, let's skip ahead a little bit. Yeah, just super duper um, complete in your paintings. Instead, when I know I only have about an hour, I make much smarter decisions, to be perfectly frank, than I do when I'm working off of a photograph. I can really focus on just getting overall impressions of what's in front of me and relying on that rather than thinking that all of this intricate detail is what's going to really make the painting. And the result with this piece is that, like I said at the beginning, this was so much looser and more expressive. Yeah, any life painting is going to look way better than a photograph. There's just certain things you see why you paint like that versus when you don't. How all of this goes down in the comments. And definitely make sure you go ahead and like and subscribe so that you know anytime I have more videos on this topic because painting more loose. Oh, we're done with all the videos. <laughs> so I think she has a very instructive style. So she's actually reaching, at least in these particular three videos I chose, it's really kind of approaching it as a student is watching your videos. How do I help the student? How do I specifically guide them? And then you can set up a call. She can make more money on that side. But I think she's going to ask, I think she's going to offer a lot of really good advice. I don't know. I haven't, you know, made a strategy call with her, but just based on what she's doing, I think she has a lot of good advice and she has a very high skill level. So if you have a high skill, level, you're trying to be selling a lot more. And I really agree with the fact that she's talking about a high craftsman level in your style, whatever style that is, it has to have that craftsman feel to it. You can't just have sloppy paint, which a lot of earlier painting will probably have, or if you haven't painted that often and you're just kind of painting here and there and you might be flipping styles, you're not gonna fully put into all the that one style, everything and go into it. So I think there's a lot of good advice I think it's a, definitely a channel worth investigating. She has a lot of interesting ideas about how to become full-time artists, which artists are always curious about because I would say 90% of artists are stuck in the part-time mode and they can't really transition to the full-time or they don't know how to, or they just haven't, they have really spotty income from it. So then they just really can't say, like, I can rely on this. So it's kind of that really wishy-washy how to get out of the part-time gig into the really the full-time jump off the cliff and hit, the ground running. I know I've struggled that myself. So, you know, I think I'm going to investigate a little bit more in this channel. So I would recommend it. It's a pretty interesting channel. 
Very good if you want to learn about realism too from the oil traditional academic painting. This is a very sellable style of medium. It is good to do abstract or pop as well. So, you know, don't feel like you have to be a realist painter to watch your channel. I think a lot of this general artist advice will be work across all different types of styles. So that's my reaction. If you guys want to subscribe, you can subscribe below. And I'll see you in the next Artist React video.